Hi everyone, this is Russ Colquitt from Wet Sioux Survival, and, and today I'm going to talk a little bit about this nifty little survival rifle. It's a 22 long rifle, single shot survival rifle or pack rifle made by uh, Chiapa Firearms in Dayton, Ohio. And this is a gun that I've wanted to see for a while. I have an M6 Scout, which is a 22 and 410, uh, but they're expensive and they're not made anymore. And I, I remember hearing about this, someone making this type of gun, and this is something that I've wanted to make myself for a while, like an ultralight pack gun, just a single shot 22. And then it kind of fell off my radar, and then recently a friend of mine uh, brought it out to the range, and we, we shot it. Well, first off, it's really a neat gun. It's real basic, um, simple, made out of steel, some other kind of metal, and some plastic or polymer. Uh, the, the stuff that I like is that it's super simple. It seems to be kind of rugged, um, but the front sight ears are a plastic. The front sight itself is plastic. It's all one piece. The rear sight is a mixture of plastic and metal. It's got a, a peep sight that's plastic. It's adjustable uh, for both windage and uh, elevation. It's got a quad rail that's some sort of plastic, and that's kind of a neat thing. I, I hope it's durable enough, but you could, you know, you could slap on a, um, you know, like a light on the side. You could put a small red dot on the top. Uh, the, the stock is a steel wire, the butt, butt plate's plastic, it's got these little clips that hold, um, these plastic clips that hold 22 rounds, but I just knocked one out when I just picked it up. So I, I, and that, I figured that was a problem with this design, is you flip on, you flip one of these, the nose of one of these rounds and it's going to flip out. You're going to buff this all the time, these rounds are going to come out. So that's kind of a, a design flaw. But, um, oh, and it's got, this is kind of a cool thing that we'll talk about later, but it's got a threaded barrel. 1 in 26 TPI, it's got a threaded barrel. And that little plastic piece I just dropped doesn't even thread on. It's just a plastic cap that goes over the threads, so it doesn't even thread, and that's kind of a dumb thing. You might want to get a, a metal one that screws on. Um, but the, the main design problem that I want to talk about that I discovered with this is when my friend handed it to me, I started messing around with it, and I just, you know, cocked the hammer back, let it down with my with my thumb, like you, you know, wrote it down like you would a revolver or a single shot shotgun, and I just put it back down. Um, the problem was, is he didn't tell me how to run this gun, it's super, super simple, we didn't look at the instruction manual, so I just made certain assumptions that, you know, hey, um, I'm just going to open it up, check it out, see if there's a safety, there's not, um, how does the hammer work, how does the trigger pull feel, can you ride the, ha you know, can you ride the hammer back down, and you can't. All right, now here's the problem. Um, I'm going to go up here and show you this. When I cock the hammer back and ride it and ride it back down, the firing pin protrudes through the, the breech face. And it's immovable. I can't push it back in. All right? Um, I can cock it back a little bit, and it goes back in, and it's smooth, and it sets the trigger. But if I just cock it back and write it down, it sticks out. If you do it with it closed, it doesn't do that. You, once you open it up with this lever, it operates the hammer a little bit, sets the trigger, and uh, you can put your round in. Here's what happened to me at the range. I'm going to show you. You might already guess what's going to happen. So, I, I mess around with it a little bit. Pulled the hammer back, let it down with my thumb. Didn't notice that it was sticking out of the breech face. Insert it around. Insert it around. And closed it. Ah, didn't do it. Sweet. Um, did that. Just like that. And it didn't have my finger on the trigger. Just closed it. And so you can imagine that hammer, or that uh, fire pin sticking out of the breech face, hit right on the rim, because, you know, it's a rim fire. And... Um, it's, it touched the round off. That's not cool. That's a design flaw. This gun isn't broken. That's a design flaw. This is the second one I know of already. I checked with a friend of mine who has this uh, same gun, and his does the same thing. I was at the NRA convention uh, last weekend, and I went to the TF Firearms booth, talked to the guy sitting there, told him what happened with this gun. He didn't seem to give a shit at all, so I don't know what his status was at the company, but he didn't seem to care. Uh, obviously, the one in the booth didn't do that because they had the firing pin taken out. But um, this is two guns now that this does. My friend is sending this back to the factory. 
I don't know what his conversation was about it, but they're going to take it back and fix it somehow. I don't know what that means, because it's a design flaw. As near as I can tell, it's not something that's broken, because they both do it. The other gun just has a few rounds through it. This just has a few rounds through it. I so wanted to love this gun, because it kind of fills a niche in something that I've wanted to see for a while, ultralight backpacking or survival gun, single shot. The fact that it's a threaded barrel is extra cool. We'll just thread this guy right now. See how quiet it gets with a can on it. This is a Tactical Innovations TAC-65. It's a simple little can for a .22. We'll just see how quiet it is. I'm pulling all kinds of rounds off here. I don't want tracer rounds and snake shot. I don't think that's going to work very well. Quiet enough. Not that quiet, but quiet enough. It's kind of cool. There's an extractor that pulls the spent cartridge casing out, but you still have to pull it out with your fingernails. It doesn't just pop it out. It doesn't eject it. It just kind of extracts it a little bit. Other than that, if they get this thing figured out, the problem with the fixed firing pan when you close it, I think it would be a badass gun for $1.50 or whatever it costs. I'll pick one up for sure, but I'm going to make sure that mine's fixed. So that's it. This is Russ Colquman from Wet Sue Survival giving you a little bit of information on the Chiapa Badger, Mini Badger. Thanks for watching.